Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5 and today I got a what I consider to be an interesting video for you today. This is not a, a video about my Microtech. It's just there to look at while I do the introduction to this video. And this video is about defining tactical knives. Not defining the world of tactical knives, but defining the subcategories of different knives that make up the umbrella term tactical knives. Because if you think of it, there's a wide spectrum of different knives that are tactical, but they're different. They're not not all not tactical knives or uh, fighting knives. They're not all combat utility knives. They're not all uh, fighting photos, tactical photos, uh, self-defense knives. These are all different terminologies that make up tactical knives. And I thought I'd go over that in this video. So first off, to talk about tactical knives is we're going to talk about what I consider to be the bottom rung of uh, the tactical knife. Uh, well. Maybe not the bottom rung, but it's, it's, it's not high up there. And that is the self-defense knives. And these knives are characterized by um, their carryability and um, their use. They're used for close range. I mean, you're in arm's uh, reach of someone. Uh, you're, you might be grappling. You might be on the ground already. And these knives are for cutting people off of you and uh, either stopping the threat, uh, either, let me uh, rephrase that, either giving you an option to get away or having to stop the threat right then and there. But these knives are not uh, fighting knives by any means. They're, uh, to put simply, self-defense knives. And I often put in this category of knives, I put um, karambits, um, at least small karambits, like the folding variety, and I even at the larger karambits. Um, I put neck knives and um, small fixed blades like neck knives, boot knives, small um, well, no, I'm not going to put that one in there. But, um, something I will put in there is, uh, the, um, the push knives. So, um, what makes these knives self-defense knives is that they're not knives you necessarily want to use on a knife-on-knife -knife conflict, or a knife-on-gun conflict, or a knife-in-baseball conflict, uh, but baseball bat conflict. These knives are best used against the unarmed opponent. Um, now, um, I'll talk a little bit about that later. These knives can be used against someone with a, another person with a knife or a gun or a baseball bat, but you don't have that great of advantage against that other armed person. Um, obviously, with the neck knife and the crambit, um, they're very fast to deploy, and uh, you got speed on your side and you can do some major damage with any of these knives but um, not always ideal for some going on a weapon on weapon conflict and some people are going to grill me for uh, even acknowledging the fact to use a weapon on an unarmed person but remember well, this is self-defense this isn't a duel and um, these self-defense knives uh, are in my opinion best used if or the the best um, used in the a way of if let's just say there's a woman uh, fighting a man or a, a little man fighting a bigger man or a, a man fighting multiple opponents or a woman fighting multiple opponents. Uh, I don't believe in the concept of man up, uh, don't be a coward. Um, I don't believe in that concept because uh, I value life a lot more than that and uh, that concept will get you killed if you're going to duel somebody i.e. be uh, square up and mutually fight someone uh, using similar weapons whether that be unarmed knives guns you never want to put yourself at the same level as the person attacking you you want to put the advantage in your favor so um, yes uh, there is a um, a place for knives being used against unarmed people, and like I said, uh, if um, you're a woman and you can't 
carry big old knives because women's pockets are terrible. They can't carry hardly anything. Um, and, um, um, you know, like I said, if you're in a scenario where uh, you don't want to be very obvious of what knives you're carrying, you want to hide them out. Um, which I also consider these kind of hideout knives. Um, boot knives, push knives, neck knives, uh, the corambit. Uh, these knives are best used against someone who is unarmed. That's the short bit of it. If someone tackles you and puts you to the ground and you need a knife quickly um, that you can accessibly get to, which I really don't think boot knives are the best self-defense option, but hey, some people like them. Um, uh, you get one of these knives out and you can do one of two things. You can cut them off of you. Uh, and they let go of you and you run away or you can cut them and if they still want to fight then you can finish them off um, but these knives are meant to be used with very little skill uh, not to say that these knives can't be used with great skill if there's a Filipino knife fighter or a Salat fighter or um, someone who um, specializes in small knife combat they can use these with great skill uh, but the average Joe, the average Joe is at a black belt. The average Joe is at combat ready. And they just need to grab a knife and stick them a few times to maybe cut the flexor tendons, maybe the throat, maybe the eyes, the head. Anything to let the other guy let go of them. Um, and um, uh, that's what these knives are best used for. Like I said, um, I'm not talking about duels. I'm not talking about... Uh, I'm not talking about a knife you go to war with. These knives are purely self-defense knives for the defense of yourself. Um, you know, that's what these knives really shine. By the way, the knives I'm using in this example are the Bastinelli Orban Raptor, the Cold Steel uh, uh, um, Bowie Spike, and the Emerson Combat Corambit. Uh, these knives are really good for self-defense but not necessarily as a fighting knife or a tactical photo. Uh, and uh, that's how I envision or that's how I perceive these knives when I hold them, look at them, feel them. And uh, they're what I call self-defense knives or back off, get off of me knives. Knives to be used when distance is uh, not a luxury that you have. It's very close range, very dirty. So uh, now that I got the self defense back off, get off of me knives out of the way, let's put those up. Um, by the way, I don't know if I showed you this, but the push knife also belongs in this category. Maybe even these double agents. But um, those knives, like I said, they don't they often the user who uses these knives don't have the best skill set they'll basically cutting the person off of them and until they stop attacking them now let's uh, go into um, the next category of knives um, let's see I think I got all of them no I'm missing one here we go uh, I can sell the, this next um, set of knives or this next category of knives to be kind of on the same level as the self-defense knife but they're just a little bit more practical for everyday use and that is the tactical photo and um, that could be an Endora, Spyroco Endora um, it could be uh, a Emerson uh, Super Commando. Um, a Stridle. Or a Cold Steel Recon 1. These are tactical photos. These knives are probably about as useful as the um, uh, self-defense knives as far as the combat effectiveness is concerned. Um, you can see the you, though for the most part, are the same size. Um, 
there was my hand for size comparison but these knives are not what I define as self-defense knives they're what I call tactical photos or sometimes I refer to them as tactical EDC that means it's an EDC knife that um, you use uh, you know for day-to-day -day cutting tasks but that can be used in self-defense these knives don't offer you a great advantage on knife on knife conflict or knife gun conflict or knife and baseball bat conflict uh, they don't offer you that great of an advantage um, they're relatively small I mean these are going to be big for some people to carry but when I carry a knife for self-defense these are con these are really really small these are what I call consider um, tactical EDC that means they're mostly going to be used for EDC everyday cutting tasks but they have the ability to be used in a self-defense situation and like I said with the um, self-defense knives these knives will be best used against someone who is unarmed uh, not to say you can't use it against someone with an, another knife in fact you're more likely to come in contact with the other person who's wielding a knife with a knife of this size so the ball should be pretty even in that respect but um, they're good for um, if you're a woman and you can pocket these knives because I know that women's pockets aren't that big you get ripped off in the pocket world but um, if you can pocket one of these knives um, they're good for um, uh, women who are uh, being attacked by a man or I guess another woman it's good for a um, man who's being attacked by um, a, um, another man who is bigger or is also armed with a knife of this size it's good for uh, met both men and women who are being attacked by multiple, multiple assailants but they're not fighting knives they're not combat utility knives they're tactical photos they're tactical EDC knives they're EDC knives that can be used in a self-defense roll if it happens and most people will carry the, just one of these types of knives um, I carry both a self I carry a knife both dedicated for self defense and one that's dedicated or not always dedicated but I also carry a, a EDC knife so I can always have a sharp knife when I need it if that scenario were to happen so that's pretty much it um, used to back in the day this was my self defense knife this was my tactical photo and I thought this was an awesome knife to use in that scenario this is this knife gave me confidence that uh, if something were to happen this could get me out of that situation but um, after carrying the next rung of knives I really realized that this leaves a lot to uh, this lacks a lot um, leaves a lot to be desired um, pretty much the same size as the stridle which I would not want to bet my life on a stridle or this knife now that I've carried things that'll better it's about the same size as the um, Super Commando and it's a little bit bigger than the Endora so these knives are um, like I said good for EDC task and if need be for self defense but I would not want to depend as on this as my primary self defense weapon or tactical weapon or fighting knife um, but these next run of knives um, are what I consider to be fighting photos and um, I want to start from smallest to liter a bit smallest to largest and the fighting photo run is cold steel five and a half inch photos um, there's a few other companies that make large folding knives but five and a half inches is about the smallest you want to go um, it's the biggest I can legally carry in Texas and um, uh, after sparring with knives of similar sizes I wouldn't want anything smaller than this but the, this size of knife gives you the ability to fight at longer range uh, so you can keep the threat 
farther away from you and uh, lessen your chance of being cut. This is a, a battle knife to carry if you're going to uh, go against someone else with a knife. Uh, like I said, most people who's going to He's walking the streets with a knife. It's going to be carrying something like this, maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, but um, this will give you advantage over the person carrying this. And um, um, like I said, with sparring, and Lynn Thompson told us this um, as well when we talked to him, when you're using five and, inch, five and a half inch folding knives, you're going to be using the tip a lot more than you're going to be using the home tile blade. Um, and you're going to think to yourself, really? I mean, this is a large knife. You, you'll think you'll get a little bit more reach where you can use more of the blade. But really, you don't get the, the fact that this knife is five and a half inches allows you just to use this much of the blade um, when fighting at long range. Doesn't mean you can't use a home tile blade, but most likely to keep the person out of cutting range of you, you're going to be using this much. So that is on the small end of what I consider fighting photos. Fighting photos, uh, I characterize these knives by their ability to take on larger knives and to fight at longer distances. And also, they're a little bit too big to use as an EDC knife. Not to say you can't use it as an EDC knife, I have done it before, but it's very awkward to clean your fingernails with a knife that's this long. It's a little bit awkward to open up boxes and to open up mail with a knife this long. Uh, so um, it belongs in a separate category of it's not a tactical photo uh, like or a tactical EDC knife. It's its own category of knives, and this is on the small end. Um, there's a few different knife companies that make five and a half inch folding knives. Cold Steel makes a, a bigger variety of them. But um, let's see, what else can we put in this category? Well, how about the Cold Steel Holdout? Uh, I think it's the Holdout uh, 3. Well, I'm just going to call it the Holdout. But this is a six inch long knife, and I can barely get it in frame. And um, as you can see, it's serrated. This one's going to give you more of an advantage than this one. You'll be able to use more of the blade. You got longer reach. You can choke down or choke up whatever's more comfortable. This one has neutral handles, so um, uh, it might be a little bit difficult indexing the knife. Although if you open it, you should know which way the blade's f facing. But um, it has a neutral handle knife. So you can pretty much uh, comfortably choke it anywhere on the handle and get a good grip. And uh, this is going to allow you to fight at longer range than the five and a half inch folding knife, and uh, still carryable for the average man. Um, these fighting photos, I wouldn't necessarily consider a, a, to be a, a woman friendly knife. Not trying to be sexist, but it all comes back down to pockets and. Um, um, just my experience with a women's clothing, they, their pockets suck. And so, um, if a woman is able to pocket this with whatever they're wearing, I would say go for it. But, um, usually men's pockets are bigger and they can accommodate larger objects. So this is a good option to have, um, if you can legally carry it. Like I said, in my state, I can legally carry this. When I go to Arkansas, I carry the biggest thing I can, uh, I can comfortably carry. Last year, it was this and a Bowie knife. Uh, I have just recently got the next size up in the fighting photo category. And let's move these out of the way. Cold Steel Extra Large Espada. I don't even know if I can fit it in frame. This is a seven and a half inch long blade. This knife is can be difficult to pocket by a man. They can fit it in the waistband. Sorting pants can pocket this. But this is probably the epitome of the fighting photo uh, category. Seven and a half inches. Got a sub hilt so you can get a good grip and choke down at the same time. You got a very wide blade. Very acute tip. Up swept. 
this this is modeled after the Navaja Caraca, which is a, a, a Spanish folding fighting knife. And Cold Steel gave it a, a mortar and makeover. They put the sub hilt on it. And this knife will absolutely give you advantage over almost anything else on the market today. Uh, if you can legally carry this and comfortably carry this, you can rest assured that this is most likely not going to pose that big of a threat to you. And it has the thumb plate, which also acts as an auto-deploying um, device on the pocket. You snag this on the pocket, and it opens up automatically. It's not an automatic knife, it's, but um, it has the ability, ability to be opened very quickly. So this is probably the epitome of the fo fighting folding knife. Um, and um, a fighting folding knife, uh, just like what I explained with the um, tall roll, which is five and a half inches, they're uncomfortable or inconvenient to use as an EDC knife. They're purely for um, f fighting or self-defense or uh, combat. And these fighting photos, this one and this one and uh, this one, they give you the ability to um, uh, oppose larger weapons. You can bully with this, you can slap with the flats of it, parry. Uh, uh, not that I'll recommend it, or I, I don't recommend any of these activities, but you actually have the ability with this to parry a machete. Uh, you're still at a big disadvantage versus a guy with a machete, but you have the ability to stand a fighting chance, so to speak. So I really like this knife. Uh, so if you live in Arkansas, this is a good knife to have. Now, let's talk about the next round of knives. Uh, these knives are not what I consider to be fighting knives. Uh, they're all in their own category, but um, they're not going to be carried uh, every day by the average citizen. And um, I have a couple of examples. We have the USMC cable, which my brother modified, gave it a convex grind, and it gave it this cool two-tone color. I really like it. Um, and the Blackjack number no. seven, which is a copy, a, a poor man's Randall fighting knife. That's what this is. If you're a fan of Randall fighting knives, this is what this is. Uh, the model uh, one, I think. The uh, this is a seven one. I think it's the Blackjack model. The uh, and this is the number one in the Randall world as well. People call these fighting knives, or some people call these fighting knives, but they're really not fighting knives. They don't give you the same advantages as a pure fighting knife does. The category of knives that these belong to is the fighting utility knife. Hence the name that Cable put on this knife, the fighting utility knife. It's a knife that is fixed blade, uh, large enough to give you a decent amount of reach, is fairly robust, and uh, you're going to be using this as maybe a, a um, depending on your uh, situation, maybe as a hunting and skinning knife, maybe as a knife to open up a can of food or MRE, a knife that um, can be used in a combat setting to take out bad people if you're so unlucky enough to not have gun and bullets at hand. Uh, so, um, yes, you can use these knives um, as a f combat knife. You can you can kill people with them, but they're not the best job. The, they're not the best uh, weapon to have to do that, or they're not the best knife to have to do it. This is the multi-tool of the tactical world. Uh, you can use it from anything from hunting, uh, trapping, bushcraft. Uh, utility task um, and combat and um, so um, for the soldier uh, military personnel 
this knife might make more sense to use than a pure fighting knife because they can do a lot more task. Um, perfect example, uh, back in World War II, uh, the Farrow Sykes knife was popular. It was a dedicated fighting knife, a very crappy one at that, but that's what it was. And the Marines had the Marine Radar Stiletto, and some Marines had the cable. Now, Marines are very practical people. And um, uh, it was, I think it was Rex Applegate recommended carrying a cable for camp task and the daggle or fighting stiletto or Marine Radar Stiletto or Fairborn uh a daggle. You can choose any of those. He recommended carrying the daggle for sentry removal and fighting and the cable for uh, camp task. And like I said, the Marines are very practical people and they thought to themselves, why carry two knives for two jobs when I can use one knife that can do it all? So that's where the combat utility knife really holds its own. Is It's not necessarily the best knife to use in combat, but you can do a lot of different stuff with it and when you're carrying a lot of gear it's, it behooves you to have something that can do a lot of task uh, that can do yeah carry something that can do a lot of different tasks so it saves you on weight and that's where these knives really shine now let's talk about the final rung of knives or running knives um, and this knife category, uh, as with the last one, is geared towards uh, uh, military, but also can be uh, used by law enforcement and certain civilians. And when I say certain civilians, that doesn't mean that certain civilians have, um, what's the word I'm looking for, they have a, a, a the special in any way over other civilians, they just live in a state that allows them to carry these size of knives. And that is the pure fighting knife, the dedicated fighting knife. This is the Colombian River Knife to Hisatsu. And uh, this is a Ontario Bagwell Fortress, which is a little bit smaller than the Hell's Bell. And um, these knives what sets them apart from other knives is that they're dedicated fighting knives. These knives are really no good for any other task other than killing other people or destroying other people. Uh, you can see that these knives uh, are completely different from each other but yet they're in the same category. This is Japanese influenced, this is Western fighting influenced. And um, they have different fighting styles. Um, this one is a little bit more close range fighting uh, geared for fighting in closer ranges. It's more of long range fighting. But they're not good for um, utility tasks. Um, they're really fast in hand. They're really lightweight. They're very, very good at maiming and killing other people. But you don't want to be uh, opening up a can of food. You don't want to be opening up an ammo box. Uh, you don't want to be um, uh, bushcrafting with these knives. But uh, if you feel that you want the best of the best um, advantage uh, versus another opponent that's equally armed or uh, uh, has put got a drop on you and you don't have a firearm handy these knives will get the job done and when I go to Arkansas I'm going to be carrying this because uh, I can legally carry it and that's why I said special citizens can carry these knives because certain states have better self-defense and weapon laws than others so if you can legally and comfortably carry these knives which I can legally carry these knives in Arkansas and I can relatively comfortably carry these knives. Uh, I'm going to carry them because they give me all the advantages uh, that uh, can be afforded to me in a self-defense situation. So uh, basically this one, this main advantage is its tip and uh, it has a neutral handle and is very grippy. 
and uh, it's for a uh, more of a thrusting uh, uh, self-defense fighting style, a very close range fighting style uh, relative to the uh, buoy. This has a fighting gold on it, Spanish notch, a very good tip, but it also has the ability to hack off limbs. So this is a, a very good option to have if you're a long range knife fighter. If someone uh, tr tries to uh, parry, you can grab the blade. You can uh, misdirect it or, or uh, take it away from them. So these knives are what I call true fighting knives, dedicated fighting knives. And these are probably the absolutely best kind of knife you can have in a knife-on-knife -knife situation, uh, depending on your fighting style. But they're not always practical for civilians to carry, and they're not always practical for military law enforcement to carry. It depends on the person and how they best feel they can defend themselves and carry a knife. If you can carry a utility knife and a fighting knife, this is a good way to go. If you can only carry one knife, then a combat utility knife is probably a better way to go. If you can't carry a combat utility knife because you're a citizen or a civilian or maybe law enforcement, uh, maybe the uh, fighting photo is the way to go. If you can't carry that, then the um, uh, uh, tactical photo or tactical EDC knife is the way to go. Then there's the uh, self-defense knives. When someone asks me what knife they should carry for self-defense, I say they carry the uh, uh, thing they can legally carry, comfortably carry, and it's usually the largest thing they can legally and comfortably carry. Now, I might opt to carry my Crambit in certain situations because it's very fast, very non-noticeable, and I might be in a place that I don't want to draw big attention to by having a, uh, well, uh, where was that knife? Uh, I don't want to draw attention to myself by carrying something that's loud like this. So I might want to carry this. And uh, usually I like to carry this Comet Karambit in a ball. Um, because it's usually dark in a ball. ball and uh, people won't notice that you're actually carrying this. As opposed to something with a really shiny pocket clip. So uh, that's it. That's the video. Um... I guess there's one more um, category of tactical knives, and I consider these to be obsolete. Um, so I put them in their own category the Balisong and the Switchblade. Um, they're both considered Switchblades, and I can legally carry Switchblades in Texas, but these knives don't give you the best advantages used to, um, you know, a, a balisong or a switchblade was the fastest way you can open a knife, but these days they're obsolete. You get uh, assisted openers and a well-made folding a manual folding knife can open up as fast or even faster than these knives. So I put these in the category of tactical knives. Tact, A, C, O, O, L, tactical uh, cool knives. And they're fun, but I wouldn't necessarily want them in a self-defense situation. That's it. I hope y'all have a great day. I'm Satsi5, and I'm out.